Hi, I'm Alan from Clearview. In this technical presentation, I'm going to cover how to specify and design a 3D vision system. 3D camera technology has been around for a long time. In this first slide, we simply want to illustrate that the technology itself has been around for over 160 years. What's come on uh, in leaps and bounds in the last few years has been the software algorithms and the computing power combined with advanced 3D sensor technology, which has really allowed 3D vision systems to come to the fore. So systems that can be deployed uh, that really, really wasn't possible you know, five, 10, 20 years ago. Before we delve into some of the technical details, the first question that you may want to ask is, why 3D? Why do you even want to use 3D? So if we start with a really simple example where we have a pack of cookies, what we're trying to do here is look at the, uh, the different rows and we're trying to see how many cookies are stacked on top of each other and we're looking for problems. So from the naked eye or from a 2D vision system, I don't think it's really, really possible to pick out if there's any cookies missing from the pack. But if we flip to a 3D vision system image, what you'll see from the depth map image here is that there's a problem. And there's no way that that kind of problem could have been solved with 2D. So a really, really simple example of why uh, in this case, 2D wouldn't have been suitable, but 3D definitely is suitable to solve a problem like this. If we uh, go with three more examples here, um, the one on the left is kind of a very classical um, 3D vision system when you, when you think of 3D vision. So robot bin picking, pick and place. So in this case, you've got the robot and then you'd, you'd then have a 3D uh, camera and a 3D vision system sitting alongside the, the, the robot and then you'd be looking uh, at random bin picking, so, so picking apart and, and placing it into another location. The middle example uh, of the tyre, maybe that's not something that's so, so common when you think about 3D vision systems. Um, and maybe some people would try to solve that with a 2D vision system, but it would be incredibly difficult to do that because you've got black characters on a black background. So maybe you could do it with a really advanced illumination setup, but another approach is to take a 3D camera and a 3D vision system, extract the, the kind of uh, the characters that, that, that are above the, sitting above, raised characters sitting above the tire, extract them using um, 3D camera, and then you'd flip that uh, 3D uh, data into a 2D image, and then you do just do classical 2D uh, character verification, and, and then you'd, you'd be able to crack that problem. And then on, on the right-hand side, you've got a, a case where you're looking at the surface of, of a part, and you're looking for, for, the, for the depth information, and you wanna know if there's damage or, or if, there's, if there's a fault in that particular surface. And that's again, classically where a full 3D vision system could solve a problem like that. Before we move into some of the, the more technical aspects of the presentation, there's kind of two principal things that we need to, we need to cover. First of all is some terms of, of analysis and, and acquisition. So if we think about acquisition um, to start with, there's lots of terms that are branded around when talking about 3D vision system. And just to, just to cover some of those terms so that you're familiar with them. So you might hear things like profiling or depth map or point cloud or range map. Effectively, these are all different ways in which you can acquire 3D information through a 3D camera device. And then once you have those, those, those different profiles or depth map or point cloud or range map, you would then take them and then do some analysis. And the kind of analysis you can do uh, with that 3D data could, could be metrology, could be inspection, could be bin picking, or could be overall dimensioning. So, so on the analysis side of things, um, the kind of terms are very familiar if you're, if you're used to talking about 2D uh, systems, but on the acquisition side of things, things are very, very different. Um, in terms of the, the technology required um, to, to acquire 3D information. And really uh, where we're gonna spend time on this presentation is to cover the different types of 3D technologies. So in this case, we're gonna cover stereo vision, time of flight, laser triangulation, and structured light. And I'm gonna go through each one of these four technologies in, in more detail. But before uh, we go through some of those um, technologies in more detail, th there's a list of questions here and some of these uh, questions that, that might pop up um, would be very similar if you were putting together a 2D vision system, but some of them are, are a little bit different. But the reason why some of these questions are so important is because um, depending on the answers to these questions, they will lead you to know which kind of one of those four technologies that I mentioned before is a right one to use. So 
What accuracy is required is the first um, question listed there. And the four technologies that we're going to talk about all have very, very different um, uh, kind of accuracies, 3D accuracies. So if you, if you need a very, very high uh, accuracy vision system, but you choose a 3D camera technology that can't meet that, you're not going to be able to, to get there in terms of your, your overall goals. So that's, that's a, an important point to cover. How quickly do you need to inspect or measure? Some of the, some of the 3D cameras work quicker than, than, than others. So again, if you need to work very, very quickly, but the 3D camera technology can't go as quick as you need to, then that's going to be a problem. Uh, if you think about bin picking, from where are you, are you picking? Uh, where is that picking taking place? Um, are the objects fixed or are they, are they moving? Um, Sometimes people think of 3D that only works with monochrome systems, but it will work with both color and, and monochrome, but you need to decide that up front. Then when you're working with some of the, uh, the 3D technology we're gonna talk about, you need to think about the surface that you're actually trying to inspect. Is it a reflective surface or, or is it absorbing? And, and when we start to talk about the technologies, you'll realize why that's, that's also really important. Same with, with, a sur with a surface. Is the surface textureless or not? And what we mean by textureless or not, for example, the, the wall behind me, we would describe that as a textureless surface. Whereas if you have um, a scene which is very complex and has lots of edges and information, we would, de we would uh, describe that as very rich in texture. Um, are the objects orientated? They're semi-orientated, they're randomly orientated. Again, things that you need to think about when, when deploying a, an advanced 3D vision system. Uh, are, are there single or multiple objects? Are there multiple object types? Um, are the objects small or large? Um, how large uh, is the field of view required? And how far away uh, are the parts going to be? So possibly not an exhaustive list, but certainly to get started, a bunch of questions that you certainly need to be thinking about when, when you go through how to deploy uh, a 3D vision system. And, and you'll see why, why these things are, are more important as we go through the technologies themselves. So if we start with, with stereo vision, um, stereo vision uh, uses two cameras um, and very similar to, to, to humans where we have two eyes, uh, it mimics human depth perception. Um, the technology itself is, is a passive method of, of, of 3D. And we're gonna talk about technology which is either passive or active. When we refer to, to passive, it effectively means the technology itself is not using an inbuilt laser or an inbuilt light source or an inbuilt projector that is, that is projecting light or a laser onto the scene to be able to, to, to gather that 3D information. And that's one of, um, of, of stereo vision strengths. Um, the resolution you can get uh, varies, but, but will typically go down to, to millimeter range. Um, it works very well in bright and ambient uh, light, um, which is a big plus compared to some of the other technology we're going to talk about um, in a moment. It will cope well with moving objects. So if, you're, if you put a stereo vision system on a, on a production line and parts are moving down that production line, it, stereo vision will be able to cope with that. Um, one of the big downsides of, of stereo vision is that the, the algorithms required um, to, to have a very accurate uh, stereo vision system are very heavy uh, computationally. So, so you, you need to ensure the solution you've got is either got some kind of FPGA or GPU accelerated um, solution. Otherwise, it's gonna work uh, really, really slow. Um, it will work with long distances. So if the application you're trying to solve uh, requires that you, you have a, a system which works over, over, over many meters, tens of meters, um, then stereo vision is the technology to look at. And then it struggles with textureless surfaces. Um, and so if you're trying to, uh, to get some 3D information from a white wall, for example, then you would probably need to use some kind of uh, light source, whether that be uh, some kind of uh, laser, laser grid or something like that, just to, just, just to project some kind of uh, information and texture on, onto the surface. And then in terms of costs, as you'll see as we go along, it's kind of a, a, a lower end uh, cost, uh, so uh, roughly about three thousand pounds. And when we talk about the cost, it, it, it's for the it's for the camera setup itself, not necessarily the, the entire vision system. So, referring to the to the three D camera hardware here. Time of flight is technology that's that's well proven and been around for a long time, but often thought of as as not very accurate uh, technology. Now that's that's changed uh, with recent um, advances in 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 time of flight sensor technology, especially the, the Sony depth sense uh, sensor that's used in some of the more modern day cameras. 
it's an active method of 3D. What makes it an active method of 3D is, is the IR light source. So you have an infrared light source uh, and effectively the, the infrared light source is projected onto the part and then um, the, the sensor is, is calculating how long um, that light source is taken to, to emit and then be reflected back to, to, the, to the sensor itself. And that's hence the name time of flight. Depth resolution down to, down to millimeters. That wasn't always possible. You know, you, you might have had in the past a time of flight camera that was only possible to get kind of centimeter accuracy or tens of millimeters, but, but, but getting single figure um, uh, millimeter accuracy is really possible now. Now, because we have that IR light source there, that means if you have very bright ambient light, it's gonna really uh, struggle. However, it will cope with uh, moving objects, so you can get that over a production line with things moving, or you can you know, have that on the, on the front of a forklift and looking at, at boxes to see how big they are before you pick them up. Uh, it will cope well with medium distances. So the, the limiting factor on the distances is more the IR light source. So how far the IR, IR light source can go. So that's why it won't work with very, very long distances. Again, reflecting on, on the IR light source, if you have highly reflective or absorbing material that you're trying to, to get 3D information from, that could be a challenge with time of flight. Um, and, and that's probably one of the, the, the biggest down points. The price point is, is certainly one of the best. So around £1,500 for a time of flight camera is, is certainly very, very attractive. Laser triangulation um, is another type of, of uh, 3D uh, technique that's commonly used. It's been around for, for a good few years and very popular with, with industrial applications. Uh, it's an active method of 3D. So in this case, uh, in, in the example, you have a camera, one camera and one laser. The laser is projecting onto the part. The part in this case would be moving uh, along the, the conveyor belt underneath the laser, the, the camera and the, and the laser will be fixed in a fixed position. Uh, the distance between both the camera and the laser will, will define um, how much resolution you get uh, amongst other things. Um, also, it's, it's key to say here that you can have two cameras and, and one laser, uh, which could help in more complex situations, or you might even have one camera and two lasers. So it's not always a system that's just got one camera and one laser. By far and away, um, the best accuracy you can get is typically from laser triangulation, so down to micron level. Um, but the accuracy isn't just down to the resolution of the camera that you use or necessarily how fine the laser is. You then need a, a very accurate software algorithm that's going to uh, detect the laser line in the scene, accurately fit um, an algorithm to that, and, and then that will be used um, to gather a bunch of, of laser line profiles, which will ultimately result in a 3D image. The technology requires motion. So the example I was talking about was the cookies moving underneath um, the, the laser line uh, along, along the conveyor. But equally, if that part was static, then the camera and laser together could move over the part and they could generate the laser lines required to, to generate a, a good 3D image. It runs at high speed, so tens of kilohertz typically, and because you've got that laser line, it's, it's better suited to shorter distances. So because of the laser setup, it's not something that would work well with medium or long distances. And then again, because of the laser line, you really have to think about the surface that you're, that you're working with. So if it's a very reflective surface or, or a very absorbing surface, and the laser may get kind of lost in the absorbing, absorbing material. Um, but the one thing you've got is a choice of laser wavelength. So, if you're imaging a particular part, then you might want to use a, a blue laser or, or a red laser or a green laser or, or something a little bit different there. So you've, you've got a bit more uh, flexibility and, and typically you can buy solutions that come pre-calibrated. So an all-in-one device, uh, which has the camera and the laser already built in, or you can do a DIY type approach where you buy a camera, you buy a laser and you build the system yourself. So the cost can vary a lot, but you know, if you were buying that kind of pre-calibrated uh, system, then it, then it could be around 5,000 upwards. If you're doing it yourself, it could, it could be even lower than this. Structured light um, is another active method of, of 3D. So in this case, you've got the camera and then you've got the structured light source, which is typically some kind of a projection device, which is, which is uh, projecting some kind of pattern onto the scene. And the two uh, things, the camera and the light source work in unison and they're synchronized together so that when the, the light source uh, is projecting a pattern uh, onto, the, onto the scene and typically 
um, moving that pattern around the cameras and acquiring images to then build up a, a depth map so that you know you can get a, a really nice 3d image depth resolution down to micron levels so again highly accurate but because of the light source if you had very very bright ambient light you may you may struggle um, it's it's a kind of fixed um, no motion type setup here so so typically when these are used in bin picking applications you might have that over a, a bin uh, of parts and then you would project the, the structured light source onto the onto the area the camera would be acquiring uh, information it would then pass it onto the system and then the robot would know uh, exactly where to go in and look but it can run quickly so you can acquire those images very very quickly so it's not something that takes you know minutes it could take a very short amount of time to uh, to, to get 3d information probably better suited to to short distances again because you're working with a light source and then similarly is it can, can struggle with with highly reflective or, or absorbing surfaces and and in terms of cost it tends to be um, one of the more higher cost type um, technologies if we then think about um, the application examples um, it's also fair to say that you know um, any one of these examples we could flip them around a little bit so you know it, it could be possible to use you know time of flight for for a bin picking application and, and structured light for for a kind of um, volumetric uh, measurement application but these are typically uh, the sweet spots so laser triangulation very good for for surface um, analysis and, and surface uh, defect um, uh, sort of failure um, there structured light as I mentioned a couple of times it is often used for, for bin picking applications time of flight um, very ideal for, for volumetric measurements in, in logistics and then stereo vision in this case could be used for for autonomous vehicles um, but equally it could be used for volumetric measurement or, or even bin picking as well in terms of uh, an overall comparison you can see in green where I've highlighted some of the some of the, the clear winners so um, you know and some of these are more important than others so so I would argue that the active or passive is only going to really come into play if you've really got something that's highly highly reflective or highly absorbing uh, but depth resolution is, is something that typically drives what kind of uh, technology you're going to use along with the the distance range and speed and if the object is moving or not and then ultimately uh, how cost sensitive your application is but hopefully that gives you a good overview of, of some of the, uh, the the key benefits of some of the technology o over each other. In terms of the actual 3D products that we offer as, as a distributor, um, there's a there's a range and we cover the whole gambit of, of technology. So whether it's time of flight, laser triangulation, stereo vision, structured light, and even the software to go with that, we, we have a solution on offer to cover all those different types of technology. When it comes to our team at Clearview, we then have a number of experts that can help you um, create or deploy a 3D vision system so if, if you need help uh, understanding any of the technologies required for your application then please feel free to, to get in touch with, with, with any one of those we'd, we'd be happy to help. Hope this presentation has been informative if you have any questions or want to know more about 3D vision please get in touch.